on time. Now, yesterday, as we were signing off the air on our two hour uh, YouTube show, we got news that Denzel Ward had dinged his knee a little bit and was limited in practice. The news now is tending to be that he's going to play. He's officially listed as questionable for tomorrow. But just knowing that he is nursing some kind of a knee thing, whatever that might be, does that change the way you approach this game defensively, knowing that they were probably going to go with a heavy dose of man coverage defense if he doesn't, Texans? If he doesn't play, then yeah, it changes things dramatically and could ultimately cost the Browns. That's how important Denzel Ward is. It sounds like he's going to play. And even if he's a little banged up, I'm not changing the game plan at all as long as he's out there. He is my man cover guy. He's as good as any in the league. And guys, I'm not messing with that. C.J. Stroud has struggled against man coverage. And I believe that Denzel Ward can shut down Nico Collins, who is by far the Texans' best wide receiver right now. This defense has been at its best when Denzel has one half of the field and MJ Emerson has the other half of the field. I mean, you turn Miles loose, you turn Zedarius loose, bring safeties on blitzes. That's what I expect to see. I do think Ward's going to play, and I wouldn't change anything. Play straight up man coverage on the outside and bring extra pressure on the inside and, and try and get to C.J. Stroud rattle the rookie. Well, listen, they, they, Houston, they was hoping that he wasn't going to play, but guess what? It looks like he's going to play. That changes the whole game plan. Now you've got man-to-man -man coverage, and on top of it, we talk about MJ Emerson, we talk about uh, Denzel Ward, but you now get to put uh, Greg Newsom on the field in the slot, which he's played a really good job doing that, playing the man-to-man -man coverage, and when you can play man-to-man -man coverage and you have one receiver, we can get cute and just say, we'll take Nico Collins to move out of the game if we want to, and, and we can bracket and do some of those things, but I just expect the Browns to line up a mono Imano and come bring this heat. No one knows the extent of the injury but Denzel and the Browns. And if I'm the Browns, I'm going forward with the game plan that he was fully healthy. However, I've spent much of the last 24 hours and will spend some of the next 24 hours trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to change things if during the course of the game something happens and he's unavailable. So, so you're not caught off guard. What is your plan? And what I would do Obviously, you're playing less man coverage. And the reason I think, Bull, you made this point, I think this is a huge deal. If he doesn't play, I'm not so sure that I would even be picking the Browns in this. Here's why. Nico Collins is a guy that he, he's, he's a better than average receiver, but he's not a superstar. The one thing he can do is get deep. And we've seen that. The first play of the game against the Colts, which was essentially for both teams a playoff game, he got behind the Colts' defense for right. a hookup on a nice long throw. He can get behind a defense. I love MJ Emerson. Speed ain't his thing. Mm -hmm. it, 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 uh, with, if Denzel's on him, I'm not worried about Nico becoming a factor. So what are you doing to stop Nico Collins and the deep threat if Denzel isn't on the field? Have a plan so right. you're not surprised well, you're if playing he has to more go out. Zone, Definitely more zone. zone and yeah, that's a, that's a negative. That's, I think I would still lean towards the Browns winning against the Texans, but I would be much more nervous about it. I was at an eight and a half when we talked about it earlier. I would be like a six or a yeah. five and a half. If the, well, it sounds crazy because you know he has that kind of still, impact. Though. I think he has a huge impact on this defense. Yeah, Miles is the straw that stirs it up up front clearly, yeah. and Denzel is the guy on the back two thirds of the defense that you have to have healthy. All right, uh, in talking about this matchup during the course of the week, McNuggets brought up a very interesting point. He said, if you look at the last five quarterbacks that the Browns have played, nobody jumps off the play sheet as being a superstar. In fact, Justin Fields and a banged-up uh, Lawrence were the only two guys that were really the starting quarterbacks of their teams. The other three that we faced were backup quarterbacks, including Houston when we saw Case Keenum. Does that change the way you guys look at how effective the, the Browns defense has been able to be over the last five weeks when you consider the fact that they weren't getting beat by great quarterbacks? It has an impact. I mean, Gardner Minshew tore them up. So they have had holes defensively in schemes before. But I just look at the, the totality of the season and their ability to get off the field on third down. We've talked about it all year. It's huge. The Browns are so good at getting off the field on third down that they've created – almost an extra game's worth of possessions for the offense. And that that travels. So it, it, it's it's could they get gashed on a drive or two? Yes. And in playing a, a better quarterback like C.J. Stroud over what they've done, they may get gashed on occasion. But over the totality of four quarters in the, in the entire game, I still believe in this defense's ability 
to force turnovers, even though Stroud hasn't thrown many, but to generate turnovers, and more importantly, it's about getting off the field on third down, and I, I think they can do that. You know, listen, I, I go back and, and look at earlier in the season. You played Brock Purdy. You, you, you played guys like Lamar Jackson. You, you pay, play guys like Joe Burrow. So if you're looking at it from a perspective, you're not going to play teams that are great every single week. And by the way, people think that Trevor Lawrence – um, is a pretty good quarterback in this league, and the Browns turned him over three times. So for me, I, I look at it as, yeah, they have not played the, t the type of uh, competition they may have wanted to at quarterback, but you only play who's on, your, who's on your schedule. And the Browns have been a number one defense regardless of what is it was happening out there. So you got to hang your hat on the defense to say the Browns defense is going to come to play in this game too, Bull. We keep it real on this show, right? I'm going to – I downgraded C.J. Stroud a little because of the competition he's playing against. So I got to do the same thing for the Browns defense. That being said, I don't think that list of quarterbacks is as bad as we're making it out to be. Justin Fields, he's not great, but he's had a pretty good year this year. The Bears are seriously considering sticking with him His going best forward. Year, for sure. Like, yeah, he was not – I mean, he's a you know, decent quarterback. They played one of those games with Jake Browning, and the Browns had a backup defense. But Jake Browning has played very well for the Bengals for the most part. He just played poorly against the Steelers. He played well against everybody else. And, yeah, Trevor Lawrence was banged up. That's a factor. I get it, but he's still a pretty good quarterback. So, at Case Keenum's a crafty veteran who we all wanted to play when, when Baker was hurt. So, I don't think the quarterback parade has been terrible. Yes, C.J. Stroud is better than the guys they've played the last five weeks. There's no doubt about it. He will be more of a challenge. But the Browns are also healthier on defense than they've been point. over the last month or so. Yeah, I agree. I don't really look too much into that. I really don't. I mean, clearly, if they had played five Pro Bowl quarterbacks the last five weeks and shut them down, I would be touting that sure. what an accomplishment. That's yeah. great. But at the same time, you only can play who's lining up against you. I saw them play very well. In fact, if you look at the season that Brock Purdy has had, there are two games that jump out as anything but really good games. One of them was against the Cleveland Browns. I think we were the first team to solve Brock Purdy, in all honesty. He had come into the game against us. I don't even think he had thrown an interception. I think he lost the week before. But didn't play poorly. Right. I, I, uh, no, we started the, no, we started the, the Niners Browns losing the first streak. Loss? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, the they came loss. in here yeah. undefeated. We cracked the code, and, you know, since he had one That's other right. bad game, but I, I'm not too worried about Baltimore, it. that Baltimore, another excellent defense. And you made a point throughout the season that the quarterbacks that have tended to have more success against the Browns are quarterbacks that run. They get yeah. out of the pocket run. Can C.J. Stroud do that? Yes. It's not one of the top three clubs in his bag. He'll do it if he needs to, but he's not like Lamar. No. He's not looking to run. No. All right, next up, these quarterback rankings are blowing my mind. So there's three different entities that are ranking all the quarterbacks that are left in the playoffs, 1 to 14, 14 teams left. Flacco, according to something called Roto Baller, is ranked 12th. The 33rd team has him ranked 13th, and Yahoo has him 9th. Guys, are they right or are they wrong? Well, you can understand why they would put him low. Just because he hasn't been good for the last 10 years. But if you've actually studied the games and watched the games the last few weeks, I can't put him 13. No one's playing better than him the last five weeks. That's exact. I mean, ninth probably sounds somewhat reasonable. I might even bump him a couple notches higher than that. But certainly not 13th or 14th. But I, you get it. You know, if, you, if you're working for one of these places and you see these list of quarterbacks, sure, you're going to put Joe at the bottom. If you haven't watched the games. Yeah. yeah. I guess it depends what the is, – is it like, you know, are we debating the quarterback you want to have right now in this moment? I'm guessing. Who's playing the best? Who is the best? Like – as, as much as he struggled, I'd still take Patrick Mahomes over Joe Flacco. Absolutely. Right? Well, of I mean, course. Now, we, we said we'd take Flacco over Stroud, but that's because Stroud doesn't have the experience. Right. I, I, I think nine is reasonable. I would, I'm with you. I, I think he's m middle of the pack of yeah. the board. 13 is ridiculous. Yeah, that's Because that nice. means you have him behind Baker, which makes yeah. no sense. Right. Uh, you know, so I, I think he's seven – you know, I, seven and nine. Yeah, range. yeah. Jake. he's in that range. I, I think what happens is sometimes on these national um, publications, you, they're just looking at a list. They haven't really watched Joe Flacco play, or they may see some highlights and look at the stats and say, "Well, what's all these picks about over here?" Like, but when you watch and you've been able to be dialed into what they're able to do offensively, I think it's very evident that Joe, Joe Flacco is somewhere inside the top ten, at least at seven, eight. You know, you put him somewhere in that range right. because he, you know, he's a dangerous person. Now, if you ask me who's the most dangerous quarterback moving right now, 
I say Josh Allen and I say Joe Flacco because they can give you two turnovers, but they can also give you throws and four touchdowns that other other quarterbacks won't necessarily yeah. get you. Yeah. I can understand the list though, Jay, because think if he was doing this in in for the Los Angeles Chargers, we might be thinking the same way. Absolutely, sure. Yes. Right, because right. we yeah. haven't watched every snap. Right. Uh, I think I can put him at eight. I didn't go through the exercise of actually ranking them. Right. But obviously, we know some of the big names. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, yeah. Dak. He's not going to be ahead of any of those guys for right. sure. Then you start looking at the mid-tier. What I, I, what I think the, the list loses is if you just rated this over what these guys have done over the last five games, and I went back and looked, he's one or two for me. Yeah. And he's probably only behind Josh Allen, if anybody at all. He's had the most passing yards over the last five games right. of any quarterback of any five-game stretch in the entire season. Think about that. His last five games, right. he's thrown for more yards than any quarterback did for a five-game stretch this year. Right. So he's red hot, and because of that, I, I put him just barely in the bottom half, but he would be towards but the top of that bottom it's half. It's fair not to judge it just on that. It is. Yeah. Age, rust, yeah. and also I think everybody is watching this fairy tale waiting for the lights to be turned. Right. And you're watching the clock waiting for midnight. And they're right. waiting for midnight. Let's face it, quality of opponent, it's not like he's beaten the best teams. Right. While That's some other teams have played better opponents down the stretch. Now, uh, on our YouTube show today, we had an exercise where we all picked our Super Bowl teams. And stunningly, Jason has the Browns going to the Super Bowl in the AFC. Bull or Bush has the Browns winning the Super Bowl. So I kind of get a sense of where our answer is going to be here. But is there is there another rabbit out of the hat for Joe Flacco and he can make another crazy run to a Super Bowl championship? Absolutely. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't pick the Browns to go to the Super Bowl. I got to go to the AFC championship game. But I think the Browns, for the first time since I've been covering them, and for the first time in decades, are a legitimate Super Bowl contender. I, I, I don't see how anybody could argue against it. Not the favorite. They don't belong. They, they shouldn't be the favorite. Right. But they should be a serious contender. He could and do it. With his experience, especially winning road games, the way he's playing right now, yeah, there's more of a chance that he could turn into a pumpkin than some other guys who have been more consistent in recent years. But the way he's playing right now and the defense they have, if he continues playing like this, there's no there's no reason the Browns couldn't win a Super Bowl this year. Outside of Mahomes, I don't know if there's another quarterback that I have more confidence in to being able to handle a postseason setting in a pressure game. You just saw his record, 10-5 and five in the postseason, as many road wins as any quarterback in the history of the NFL. Like, this is a guy that does not get rattled. He's a big reason why I think – I absolutely think the Browns are going to the – to the Super Bowl and I know like I'm the Grinch of the show and I'm the villain <laughs> and I'm dead inside and all that but I know what I see and I see a defense that gets off the field on third down that can generate turnovers that is an elite defense coupled with the quarterback who understands the moment in front of him who doesn't get rattled by pressure who can make every throw on the field and I look at it and say they have everything they need to go to the Super Bowl why not why not the Browns? I love you, man. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> no, I just yeah. never expected you to say it. The Kool-Aid is rubbing off. <laughs> I tell you, listen, the Browns have never had an offensive defense at the same time. Usually they have a sometimes good offense, bad defense. Sometimes they have a, a, a good defense, bad offense. Right now, Joe Flacco has given the Browns a offense that can compete with anybody because he can make certain throws. The defense has always been stellar. When you got offensive defense and clicking at the right time, you can win a Super Bowl. Wow. So we got three yeses. Um, I guess I'm going to steal the banner of Grinch of the show at least for this topic because I try to keep it as real <laughs> as I possibly can. My heart says, yes, he can and he will. My head says he can, but he won't. Yeah. And that's where I am right now. I, now, look, could that change if he puts up another ridiculous performance in NRG? And they put up 45 and come back with a 45-3 win. We're going to wheel you in on a gurney on this. <laughs> right, I'm right? going back in the lab with my pen and my pad, as G likes to say. And we'll revisit it. Yeah. But right now, where I sit today, I think he can, but I don't think he will, yeah. sadly. And, 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 and it, probably my years of being a Browns fan and waiting for the midnight to strike yep. are yep. playing a little bit into that. But that's kind of the way I see it right now.